So let's talk a little bit about Hadoop distributed file system. In the next module of this class, Mahidar will go deeper into how the HDFS works, what are its components, and you're going to do some hands-on exercises. But before we get there, let's just understand what is HDFS at its core. It is a distributed, scalable, and portable file system written in Java in order to support the Hadoop framework. Each node in Hadoop instance typically has a single name node and a cluster of data nodes that form this HDFS cluster. HDFS stores large files, typically in ranges of gigabytes to terabytes, and now I hear petabytes across multiple machines. And it can achieve reliability by replicating across multiple hosts and, that, and therefore does not require any RAID storage on hosts. The HDFS file system includes the so-called secondary name node, which misleads some people into thinking that the primary name, no name node goes offline, the secondary will take over. In fact, the secondary name node regularly connects to the primary name node and builds snapshots of the primary name node's directory information and, talk, and, and remembers which system saves to the local and the remote directories. Above every one of the Hadoop-based systems sits some version of a MapReduce engine. As we will see later on, there is additional engines that have been developed in the meantime. However, the core of every system still delivers a MapReduce as an engine. And the MapReduce, similarly to the HDFS, has different ways to submit jobs and track kinds of jobs we have submitted. The typical MapReduce engine will consist of a job tracker to which client applications can submit MapReduce jobs. And this job tracker typically pushes work out to all the available task trackers nodes in the cluster, striving to keep the word as close to the data as possible, as balanced as possible. So we've talked about this earlier. The MapReduce has gone a complete overhaul in the Hadoop 0.23 version. And ever since we started talking about MapReduce 2.0, or oftentimes you're going to see MRV2 for MapReduce version 2. This has then kind of turned into a new, um, into a new name called Yarn. So the Apache Hadoop Yarn is actually another subset of the Hadoop and part of the Apache Software Foundation, and it was introduced as a Hadoop 2.0. It basically separates the resource management and the processes component. YARN was born as a need to enable a broader array of interaction patterns for data stored in HDFS beyond the MapReduce kind of framework. And the YARN basic architecture, the Hadoop 2.0, provides a more general processing platform that is not constrained into this map and the reduced kinds of processes. The fundamental idea be uh, behind the MapReduce 2.0 is to split up two major functionalities of the job tracker, resource management, and the job scheduling and monitoring into two, two separate demons. The idea is to have a global resource manager and per application, application master manager. I'm not going to go into too much details about it because Mahi is covering this in our next module. So what is YARN? YARN enhances the power of the Hadoop compute cluster without being limited by the MapReduce kind of framework. Its scalability is great. The processing power in data centers continue to grow quickly because the YARN resource manager focuses exclusively on scheduling. It can manage those very large clusters quite quickly and easily. Then we talk about the compatibility. YARN is completely compatible with the MapReduce. Existing MapReduce application and users can run on top of the YARN without disrupting any of their existing processes. It does have an improved cluster utilization as well. The resource manager is a pure scheduler that just optimizes cluster utilization according to the criteria such as capacity, guarantees, fairness, fa how to be fair, uh, maybe different SLAs or service level agreements. And unlike before, there is no named map and there is no reduced slots, so it helps us utilize this cluster in better ways. It supports other workflows other than just MapReduce. As I said earlier, we're not stuck with the mapping and reducing. Now we can bring in additional programming models such as graph processing or iterative modeling, and now it's possible to process the data in new ways. This is especially useful when we start talking about machine learning applications, which I love. 
So I'm excited about this, and we're going to talk more about that in one of our classes coming down the road. Yarn allows multiple access engines, either open source or proprietary, to use Hadoop as a common standard for either batch or interactive processing, and even real-time engines that can simultaneously access a lot of different data. So you can put streaming kind of applications on top of Yarn inside the Hadoop architecture and seamlessly work and communicate between these environments.